Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. My name is Jan Marshall, I'm a web developer and over the years I have tried a lot of code editors. Everything from Sublime Text, Atom, Vim, Emacs and lastly also VS Code. For a long time VS Code has been my go-to editor. It's easy to navigate, it has a good design, it performs well enough for me. I know a lot of people complain about the performance but for me it's fine enough and just in general I never had any big complaints. But recently my Twitter or if you want one of the new people, my X feed has been blasting about cursor. Cursor this, cursor that, cursor AI, time to switch, it's better, blah, blah, blah. But now the question comes, is cursor really better than VS Code? Should we developers, or in other words, we web developers, switch from VS Code to cursor? Well, that's a good question. And that's what I'll cover in this video. So now let's go. So first of all, what is Cursor? That's a good question. So Cursor at its core is a code editor. Who would have thought? Surprise, surprise. But you know, it's a bit more special. Cursor is a code editor which brands itself as an AI powered code editor. I know AI, we all heard about it, we all know AI, it's kind of annoying already. But trust me, in this context AI is quite cool and it has saved me a lot of time. So Cursor with its AI functionality helps you to write code, edit code, delete code I guess, and just in general you can interact with your code using AI. So the promise behind that? Make coding faster, easier and more intuitive. But does it deliver on this promise? It's quite a big promise. Well, that's a good question. Question. Let's look at that. So right now you see two code editors. One is VS Code and one is Cursor. Do you see any difference? No? Well, I also don't see a difference. And the reason for that is quite simple. Cursor is built on VS Code. This means Cursor has all the functionality which VS Code brings to the table. This means it has the same interface, it looks identical, everything feels the same, it has the same speed, it has the same capabilities, that means extensions, themes, icons, you can customize it to your needs and that's quite cool. But now you might ask me, hey Jan, what's the difference? I mean, they look the same, they feel the same, everything works the same, where's the difference? Well, as I already said, AI. There are two commands which help you a lot and this is command K and command L. So when you press command L it opens like a chat box if you want to call it like that which allows you to interact with any LLM which you want. This means Claw, GPT-4, Gemini, whatever you fancy and whatever you like. But that's still pretty standard. This is right now just the LLM which you can select. Another cool thing which you can do with Claude is reference code. So for example, they have this add modifier and with the add modifier you can reference code files, you can search the web, you can search documentation, you can upload images, you can do whatever you want. So it's a chat box but a bit more extra if you want to call it like that. So I don't have to go to ChatGPT anymore, paste my code and then ask my question. I can just ask a question, then do an add with my code reference and then everything is done for me, which is very, very cool. And the second command which cursor offers is command K. And command K allows you to open like a little interface inside of your code file. So you can highlight the code which you need and then you can click command K. This will open this interface and then you can ask the question. So as an example, example right here I could just now create a function and say hey increment a number by one or write here this number by one and then just return it. And as you see AI writes everything for me and now there are three more things which I can do and that's either accept what right here cursor gave me I can decline it or at the end of the day I can ask a follow up question because maybe something is not written correctly. Now cursor also offers a third feature and this is called tabs. This gives you like an inline auto generation so it's pretty much the same to github copilot but in my opinion you don't really need it. It's a paid feature so you have to pay for that to use it. I just use Super Maven. Super Maven is free. It's very very fast and it's my favorite auto generation tool. So I would recommend you to use that. I wouldn't subscribe to the paid plan from Cursor because Super Maven offers it right out of the box and I use it daily and it's very fast and very easy to use. So now I've already touched a little bit on the pricing but now let's really talk about pricing. So VS Code is completely free. You can't pay for it. You you can pay for extensions if you want to, but the base layer is completely free. Cursor is a bit different. For Cursor, you can either pay or you can use it for free. 
So this is a freemium model. In the free plan, you have all the features which you need, so the standard VS Code features, but you can also paste your API keys for GPT or also for Cloud and use it from there. This means what I did is that I used the free plan from Cursor and I've generated an API key from OpenAI and also one from Cloud or Anthropic, whatever they are called, and I just use it from there. So I don't pay for Cursor, I just use API keys and it gives me the same features, of course, Cursor says they have a little more heavy LLM and their own things, blah, blah, blah. I don't need them. For me, the API is fine enough. So I just use the API keys and then use my command K and command L and Super Maven. So at the end of the day, both are pretty much free. Of course, Cursor offers a paid plan, but I don't use it and you probably also don't need it. So now let's summarize right here Cursor and VS Code really quickly. So Cursor is built on VS Code. That means that it retains all of the features from VS Code. So for example, extensions, themes, um, customization, performance, Everything feels the same, everything looks the same. What Cursor adds are AI-driven features like this command K and command L, so the AI chat box and this hover chat box, if you want to call it like that. So at the end of the day, VS Code plus AI. So now the question comes, should you switch from VS Code to Cursor? That's a good question. So my answer to this is in the short term, I would 100% switch from VS Code to Cursor. At the end of the day, Cursor is VS Code with added AI features and they make my life 10 times easier and it just makes developing 10 times faster. Now, as I already said, I personally don't use the Cursor paid plan. I just added my own API keys for GPT-4 and also for Cloud. It works perfectly for me. I don't need this autocomplete thing or whatever they offer. I use Supermaven for that. So for me, it's the perfect setup. I don't have to pay Cursor. It just works as it is. However, if you look at it in a long-term perspective, I don't see why VS Code wouldn't adopt all of the features which Cursor right now offers. I think VS Code, or in other words, Microsoft, will adopt the same features, probably even more features, at the same price, or maybe even at a lower price. So yeah, in the short term, probably Cursor. In the long term, probably VS Code will catch up and maybe even bring out more features for a lower price. All right, everyone. So now this video is finished. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you could learn more about Cursor and VS Code. Maybe you now also could make a decision if you should switch. If you like this video, I would highly appreciate if you would like and subscribe. It's completely free and only takes one second. Also, maybe you should consider becoming a channel member to get access to videos before others do and also to get access to videos which only channel members get. So now, enjoy your day. I hope I can see you on the next video. So now, bye.